is and just what, what you've been doing over these years? Basically, my job is to uh, figure out as many things as I can to help the New England Patriots win football games. I mean, that's, uh, in, in the end, that, that's what we're all about here. That's what we do. Uh, so whether it's, you know, strategy, personnel, uh, or, or anything else. If, uh, and I've, the, the thing that's been great about my job is I've never really had any constraints put on me. I could go in any area I thought would help us. Um, and hopefully, uh, hopefully I've made some, you know, some positive contribution. Larry, he's been described as a lot of things, research director, all of this, uh, has finally retired. I still think it's part of a restructuring of the Patriots front office. I think this is no coincidence that in the same offseason, after years of blocking um, Nick Casario from taking the Houston job, they say, yeah, go ahead, take the Houston job, and he goes. And Ernie Adams retires, and uh, Kraft talks about uh, this more collaborative process. And I think there was a subtle reorg in the Patriots organization and Ernie Adams uh, walking away. It was just sort of part of that. Maybe it all timed out. Maybe he was going to do it anyway. Maybe he was encouraged to say, we know you're, you're pretty much done here anyway, so let's do it now or whatever. I don't know the exact workings. I just don't believe in coincidences. So I, I, I don't think it's a coincidence, coincidence that the bad drafting came to a head. Robert had to spend all that kind of money in free agency. They... Bring back Patricia, let Casario go, Ernie retires. I think it's all related. Call me crazy. Call me some sort of hot take artist, but that's my take. Yeah, look, it's a logical conclusion. It's what any orga any other organization would do that had a bad year or amid high expectations. Look at the Celtics. And, uh, you know, Kraft wanted a more collaborative process and talked about a more collaborative process. So how does that happen if it's still just Bill and Ernie in the back office, which is what it's been the last 20 years? You want Bill to collaborate with people, you've got to get rid of his personal attache. And now Bill's brought in a new one, and it's Patricia, but be that as it may. That's not what I'm here to talk about. I'm here to talk about, let's remember that Ernie Adams' chief job, I feel, was head of black ops. Yep, covert ops. And his role in Spygate, this was so long ago now, and you had to flake gate in between it, and time has sort of nullified a lot of it, but it's always fun to go back and just remember what went on here, how it went on, and Ernie Adams' role in it. And uh, this is from the uh, great ESPN story uh, from Deflate, Spygate to Deflategate, where they detailed a lot of the inner workings of Spygate, going back to that. But it's a, it, it, it's a long story, but it goes into Bill Belichick's history with Ernie Adams and how they knew each other at Andover, and as soon as Bill got the job in Cleveland, he brought in Ernie, uh, no one knew what he did. Art Modell once famously offered $10,000 to any employee who could tell him what Adams did. It said, tells all those stories. Then years later, Matt Walsh, the guy that got caught here and got brought before Congress and Arlen Specter, Matt Walsh recalled to Senate investigators that Adams told old stories to the Patriots from his Brown days about giving a video staffer an NFL film shirt and assigning him to film opponents' sideline huddles and grease boards from behind the bench. So even in Cleveland, Belichick and Ernie Adams are running around, sneaking around, and taping stuff. Again, pretending to be NFL films photographers when they weren't, and filming sideline stuff, including huddles and grease boards where they were map, you know, drawing out plays. Then they get to New England, and they ramped up the whole thing. Taping from the sideline increased in efficiency. Uh, and, and so, as Walsh later told investigators, the system improved, becoming more streamlined and more secretive. The only people involved were a few coaches, the video staff, and, of course, Ernie Adams. As the Patriots became a dynasty and Belichick became the first coach to win three Super Bowls in four years, an entire system of covert videotaping was developed and a secret library created. Quote, it got out of control, a former Patriots assistant coach says. Sources with knowledge of the system say an advanced scout would attend the games of upcoming Patriots opponents and assemble a spreadsheet of all the signals and corresponding plays. The scout would give it to Adams, who would spend most of his week in his office with the door closed, matching the notes to the tapes filmed from the sidelines. Files were created, organized by opponent and by coach. During games, Walsh later told investigators, 
the Patriots videographers were told, this is my, one of my favorite parts, they were told to look like media members, <laughs> to tape over their team logos, or turn their sweatshirt inside out, to wear credentials that said Patriots TV or Craft Productions. <laughs> so devious. It really is. The, video, the, the videographers were also provided with excuses for what to tell NFL security if asked what they were doing. You tell them you're filming the quarterbacks or the kickers or footage for a team show. Okay, this story was written in like five years ago, detailing a scheme from 20 years ago. When this poor schmuck got caught in Cincinnati, what did he say? He was filming for the yeah, website or just, whatever. I was filming for the team show and I'm with Kraft Productions. Team show. Right. They didn't even change the excuse. But I, I, I point this back out because, uh, because the Bobo media here in town has just drilled into you that they were just taping from the wrong place. Everyone does it. They just could have taped from somewhere else and it would have been, it was no big deal. As Bill said, there were 70,000 people looking at the coach. You're talking about Spygate. Yeah, now. we were just taping Spygate, not Deflategate. When the fact is, no, no, no. They were sneaking around with cameras dressed as media people or with stories about being from NFL films or craft productions. There was a, a coordinated effort. By Ernie. By Ernie. Tell mother I'll be home for lunch. The cameraman's assignments differ depending on the opponent. For instance, Walsh told investigators that against Indianapolis, he was directed to take close-ups of the Colts' offensive signals, then of Peyton Manning's hand signals. Mostly, though, the tapes were of defensive signals. Each video sequence would usually include three shots. The down and distance, the signal, and, as an in-house joke, a tight shot of a cheerleader's top or skirt. The tape was then often edited, sources say, so that Adams's copy contained only the signals in rapid fire, one after another. According to investigators, Walsh once asked Adams, are the tapes up to standards? You're doing a good job, Adams replied, but make sure you get everyone who's giving signals, even dummy signals. During games, Adams then sat, sat in the coach's box with binoculars and notes of the decoded signals wearing a headset with direct audio to Belichick. Whenever Adams saw an opposing coach's signal he recognized, he'd say something like, watch for the two deep blitz, Bill, or either that uh, or the formation was relayed to Tom Brady or a play designed specifically to exploit the defense that was called. A former Patriots employee who was directly involved with the taping system says it helped our offense a lot, especially in divisional games, in which there was a short amount of time between the first and second matchups, making it harder for opposing coaches to change their signals. Uh, the story also says they benefited against teams that were less sophisticated or, as we used to say, they do what they do. Yeah, dumb. Those teams were always porked against New England because what they did the first game is what they would do the second game, including their signals, and by that point, the Pats had all their signals. Pittsburgh. So they literally had the answers to the test before it was given. Now, this didn't always work. The story also details they did this to Tampa in the preseason of the year 2000, Bill's first year here. And they played Tampa in preseason, and then two weeks later in the season opener, they got all of Tampa's signals. Tampa didn't change them. They knew 75% of Tampa's defensive signals, and still Bledsoe lost. And that's one of the things I think they held against Bledsoe. This dummy, we, have, we gave them what they're doing, and this dummy still couldn't figure it out. Uh, but either way, Ernie Adams was in the middle of that. So the, Ernie would give instructions to the guys who were taping. They would, he would tell them what to tape. They would come back and edit the tapes down for Ernie. He'd then spend all week in the office looking at the hand signals, corresponding it to the plays that were run on the field. He'd come up with the signals. And then on game day, it was him with the, the spreadsheet of all those decoded signals with the direct line into Bill telling him what's coming up. And then they'd get it to Brady, and there you go. Makes it easy, doesn't it? I mean, sort of neat. I mean, all we're missing is the trash can and the, and the drumstick. <laughs> he, he's the J. Edgar Hoover of the Patriots operation is what he is. And because he's such a brainiac and such a savant, he's the one that could do it and process it. And, you know, those hand signals are complicated, and there's a million different signals and a million different plays. And who can process that? Ernie. This was the guy. Bill's no fool. This was the guy. That's why Bill brought him along. So who else could do something like this? You would have, well, it would take like a rocket scientist, wouldn't it, to do something? Uh, oh, oh, I didn't even think of that. Interesting. Mm. Someone with an acute mind. It would take someone like who would, I don't know, once have studied to be a rocket scientist. Oh, I know who that is. Hmm. Zo! Ah, it could be Zo. <laughs> Zoe's could actually, I, I think Zo actually does have sort of a photographic memory, doesn't he? So I'm not joking. So what? No, he does actually. Uh, and he's kind of a savant. Yeah. So I mean, but but what's amazing is 
they, they had to scrap the whole thing after they got caught and all that, and they still won an incredibly high level. I mean, they clearly did it, and I'm sure it helped them. Had to have. Oh, definitely. But did they need it at the end of the day? No. No. no but let, they didn't, just like Brady didn't need the balls. And that's what makes it different than this Red Sox thing. I think these Red Sox pitchers need this crap. Oh, With, Mike, there's no question they need it. Without it, they blow. Without the taping and the deflated balls, they were still awesome. They didn't really need it. And that's sort of, that's, I think, the conclusion when you go back through history. I'll tell you, even without the tapes and everything else, Ernie still had great value, though. Like, his ability to read his sideline and... Because I think that that whole thing of reading the other coach and knowing what is, how he would, when he got nervous, what he would do, or when he was about to do something aggressive, how would he act? And I I think that was Ernie. I think Ernie was on that. I think he was the guy with the binoculars telling Bill what the hell to look out for, always. Okay, so he was no sidecar. He was right in the thick of all your shenanigans. So I just wanted to, uh, I I always love reading that story. Uh, This is obviously well-deserved. I just wanted to ask you, you know, there's the famous sort of Art Modell story about, you know, I'll give, I forget what the amount of money is, but like a thousand dollars to anybody that can tell me what Ernie Adams does. Did you enjoy being a, a man of mystery during your career? And did it help you at all do what you ultimately did to help the Patriots win so many games? Well, man, I, I'm, I don't think I'm a man of mystery, particularly, you know, in, inside the organization with the people I work with. Uh, and I've always felt that the uh, uh, the best thing you can have in a football team is to have fewer voices speaking. Um, you know, so there's no because you get multiple voices speaking, there'll be in, inevitably some inconsistencies develop, and then it'll be well, what, what he said, what he said. Yeah, we we we've just tried to eliminate eliminate that, eliminate all the distractions. That's Ernie. Gasper, unbelievable, just killing these guys with kindness this week. Ernie, congratulations on a fantastic career. Uh, This is obviously well-deserved. I mean, seriously, this guy, wolf in sheep's clothing this week, Gasper. Totally, no, and I'm glad you put it that way, because that's what it is. Hey, how you doing? So, when you were stealing signals... (laughs) (laughs) Seriously, right? The smiling assassin, Chris Gasper. Watch out when he shows up yesterday. Uh, It's like they just stick a knife in your throat. (laughs) What did he say yesterday to Bill? Bill, I hope this finds you well. Bill, I hope this... A little bit of a different one for you. I hope this finds you well. Have you talked to Brady? (laughs) Appreciate the question. Thanks, Bill. Ah, Gasper. uh, Anyway. uh, Brady, congratulations on a fantastic career. Stay away from Gasper this week, man. He's on a mission. Uh, To your phones, here, as promised. Ryan in the North End on the Spygate thing. Go ahead, Ryan. Hey, how's it going? Um, I just going to say, listening to that breakdown of how maniacal the Patriots were um, throughout that whole process, as a past fan, that just really gets me fired up. Um, you know, just <laughs> thinking about, like, that's what I want from an organization or a head coach. Obviously, if some other team is doing it, I'm going to be pissed, but it's my team doing it. So, you know, we could be one of these bum franchises like the Bengals or Jacksonville, one of these teams that just never – find a competitive edge, so I'm I'm all for them doing anything they can. What drives me crazy is how the one instance with the quarterback Bill is being so stubborn and ridiculous that he can't find the competitive edge and advantage there, because Cam's an absolute bum. Okay, well, yeah. Uh, that's a whole different story. But at least you embrace it. At least you're not sitting there saying, it didn't help. It didn't, you're making it up. No. Yeah, you're a liar. I'm making it up. You were doing it. <laughs> and, and, it, and it wasn't just, and it, you know, I, obviously the team admitted they were doing it, so you, you don't even really have that defense. But there is this sort of thing, like this narrative that gets pushed by the Patriots people. It's like, well, you know, it's just the rules were it's, if we were in a covered facility, we could do it. If we were in the stands, we could do it. But we couldn't do it from the sidelines. So there's a little bit of a gray area, and it was really just as simple as that. You're allowed to. Then, then why'd you have them duct tape over the logo? Why'd you ha- tell, tell them to. Uh, that, that they were, you know, filling for crap sports productions. Why did you have them steal media vests? I mean, come on, like that. Because you were up to no good. Yes, and <laughs> Ernie was in the middle of it. Ernie was the mastermind of that whole thing. So you know what? I don't know how many people remember exactly what you were talking about, but I remember it. That whole thing with the overhangs. Oh yeah, no, no, no. They were just on the off and deal. There was an overhang. You can shut up. You big liar. You're <laughs> lying. You're lying. You're being lied to, and you're lying. It was a lie. And then Bill's still 20 years later, not 20, but however many years later, Bill is sitting, still sitting there and reluctant to even acknowledge that he did anything wrong. 
Oh, anyway, uh, go ahead, sorry. Patriots videographers were told to look like media members, to tape over their team logos or turn their sweatshirts inside out, to wear credentials that said Patriots TV or Kraft Productions. The videographers were also provided with excuses for what to tell NFL security if asked what they were doing. <laughs> they were provided with excuses. <laughs> tell them you're filming footage for a team show. And what is amazing, when this poor guy got caught in Cincinnati last year. Dressed like a Bruins the fan. The year before, way. right? He was wearing the Bruins logo yeah. stuff. He said, well, this is for Kraft Sports Productions. We're doing it for our weekly web show. It was the same crackpot excuse. Ernie, come up with something new the second time around, buddy. Maybe that's part of the reason he's out the door. Ernie's losing his fastball. He didn't give him a new excuse. You know, I didn't even connect that. Though. I did. They don't know about him about him potentially being out the door for that reason. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, I know. It's got get, get booger in here. Get fat Patricia in here. Come on, with these at least a different excuse. I like that. Give him, give him different media badges or something. Long commercial-free segment is next.